welcome to Probe Linear. This is RP here. It's 3rd of March 2024 and we will have a new view altogether on the Nifty as this has broken this box with the gaps two times and it still is bullish and still trading about 13 EMA. With Elliott Wave, we'll have a new view altogether. So in this video, we will discuss Nifty's view for the next week as well as for next session as well. And we will see in next one or two months where the nifty can be so general elections are coming and we will try to forecast the move remember this is just a forecast it can go wrong and the wave counts can differ so first we'll check the elite wave count and then we'll check price action and indicators based analysis so let's first check the elite wave based analysis i mentioned in a last video that i'm working on the wave counts and this is the wave count that I'm considering. So after COVID, one wave finished here and wave two finished here, right? And now we are in a third wave. So the best count that I can come up with is this one. There are a couple of variations in this, which we will discuss and we'll discuss why that may not be the case. So the first case is, uh, this is one, two, one, two pattern, right? So this is one, two, right? One and two, and then this entire wave is one, two, which is marked in orange or yellow color that you see here, right? So we could be in this third wave heading on the upside. Don't get confused. It's very easy. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Then this one, two, three, four, five, like this, the wave count will finish. So we are in a third wave. So it should be the case that since there are a lot of gaps here, so this is third of third wave, you can call it. So third of third wave is usually a strongest wave and which you want to ride uh, till it lasts, right? So third wave we want to ride and this could be the potential wave count that I'm considering and we will revise this one. If this goes wrong, uh, we, will, uh, we will check what are the invalidation levels that we can get here. But other wave counts that I considered before coming to this wave count is like this. So when you consider this as a wave one and this as wave two so this entire move if you consider a wave a one then we are not able to label properly internal wave counts of this as a five wave impulse because here you don't see a wave two bending down as proportion to this one right so there is no proper wave count here when you consider this as a wave one entire wave one okay if you consider this as one and this as two then this is something that I did not consider uh, to be labeled because this clearly looks a three wave structure in that case. So three wave structure impulse wave is not possible. Other part that you can consider here is this is wave one. Okay. This is a wave. Okay. And this is B wave and this is C wave. So the problem here is the B wave is extended more than 1.382 Fibonacci. Let me show you that. So many analysts use only 1.238 to 1.382 Fibonacci as the range for A wave extension. So here you are considering expanded flat like this. This is A, this is B, and this is C. Okay. Like this, you are considering a running flat. It's more like a running flat, not an expanded flat because this C did not break the law of this one. So I prefer to avoid labeling it. Apart from that, the length of this B wave is almost 1.618 Fibonacci. And this doesn't look uh, proper to label this as a uh, running flat here, right? So that's why I labeled these wave counts as 1, 2, 1, 2. And we can see gaps here. This is the wave one. This was the consolidation of six to seven months. I think from October to June, more than six months, uh, we had this consolidation and then we are breaking out, right? And there are, this is the strongest wave in these previous rallies. So I'm considering we are in a third of third wave. So now what are uh, the other possibilities and, and what is this area, right? Let's check this area in a different chart. So this is the chart. So here I labeled this as one, two, three, four, five. Someone can label this a little differently. Someone can label this as one, two, three, 
4 and 5 as well. That's also valid. The length of this third wave is still bigger than the fifth wave. Let's check that so that we don't have doubts. So here, if you are labeling two wave, then this is 857 points and this fifth wave is 675 points. So that's valid count as well. If you label that like that, then this becomes the leading diagonal structure. Why I didn't label in that fashion? Because here I am seeing a leading diagonal structure again, right? So let's discuss that. So here you can see a wedge-like structure, though it's not complete yet. The fifth wave is still in progress. We don't know how much it will extend, but this is looking like a wedge structure. One, two, three, four, and five. This third wave is shorter than wave one. So there we have an invalidation point. Okay, so when the fifth wave becomes bigger than this third wave, this count will be invalid, right? So there is a uh, lot of, there are a lot of points remaining in order to invalidate that wave. So around 620, 630, this wedge structure will be invalidated. And that's not far away, just 200 points away from the invalidation point. So here, this leading diagonal structure will be invalidated. In case it starts to drop right so first is the break first is break of this low this candle slow or 0.600 fibonacci in that case we can assume that the downside has started since the elections are still around the corner we can expect this volatility and this much of dip is again possible towards 0.600 fibonacci of this entire length okay so that is case one uh, which we discussed Another case also can be possible. We will reach this low, okay, as a direct drop, <laughs> as a expanded flat correction. This could be A wave. This could be a complex structure B wave. And then we have a sharper drip, dip toward this. So election will give us like election completion. And then the next swing break will give us the idea of where we are and where we are heading, okay? So until the elections are over, the uncertainty of wave counts will still remain, but we do have invalidation points, which after which we need to change our wave counts. Let's check what, what is the level that we are expecting here. Once, once that is broken, we need to consider the start of wave A. So I'll go on hourly chart. So here I will use Fibonacci. So this particular A wave will confirm once it breaks, point six hundred Fibonacci. Anyway, the next day, if it opens about this, then this has to be shifted higher until we hit 630, but that's okay. So let's say tomorrow we open flat and then start the dip and break towards these two levels. Okay. So this is alert level and this is a confirmation level for me. 22,233 break is an alert level that we could be in A wave. So don't assume immediately because market has given two gaps. So it's it's better to consider the bullish case otherwise that we are still heading higher. So this is the worst case that I'm talking about. So this range can act as a long standing resistance because here you can see Nifty is stalled one month, almost one month. It's stalled here. So immediately next day, we should see that action. So somewhere from 400, 500 zones, if we correct downside towards 22,250 or 200 levels, we should be in a alert mode. Okay, then the election volatility will kick in early. And once the results come out, it might shoot higher. So that is the possibility that we can consider. So what is the bullish case here? So bullish case is already active. You can say here that we have already uh, making one to one to pattern. Okay. In that case, the bullish structure will continue. We'll open gap up in first one hour. If we do not close that gap, then again, assume the upside will continue. It may even head for uh, 21,630 and invalidate this leading diagonal structure. Clearly higher high formation is there. So we have to label them as an impulse. Let me know what you think in the comments on these wave counts and these levels. So you can ignore the assumptions, follow the price for now. It's still bullish 
and there are gaps left here after long standing consolidation nifty has come up so this is the gap on friday's session it created okay near 22047 it opened gap up then on last saturday and then on saturday's short session of almost two two to three hours it also gave a gap opening and sustained that gap so in next session also if it opens gap up and sustains that gap then again it's a buy on dips another way we can uh, label this is like this okay so it could be a possible case as well if you want to label that so this is another possibility that we completed wage here and we started that move so this is what we will assume when nifty will cross 22630 okay we will assume this wave count so hope you understand that i had that in mind but i did not discuss so we will consider this wave count as a leading diagonal structure itself if it breaks 22630 let's talk on price action indicators here you can see we are still bullish 13 ema has been broken you can see here price took the support and made a full bullish marubuzu candle this high has been broken there are two gaps here right Aron indicator is at extreme bullish zone rsi is above 62 that means it's bullish so here we have multiple supports at every 300 400 points we have support there is this support right long standing support here let's shift this line here now okay so this is the new support that we have in case of dip 22150 will act as a support so overall price is trading above 13 ema since very long at this point it broken below 13 ema but then again climbed back up so the trend is bullish and it's continued to be bullish so that's all in this video hope you like the analysis if you have any doubts ask in the comments and uh, yeah thanks for watching have a great day ahead bye bye